Hi, I'm Julie, a fan balzer, and today I'm going to show you a brand new product for your Scan and Cut. It's called Scan and Cut Link, and what it is, is it's the link between Adobe Illustrator and your Scan and Cut. I'm here in Canvas Workspace Online, and in the upper right corner, I'm going to go up to where my username is and click on that. Now you can see there's something here called Premium Function Activation. I'm going to click on that. And I'm going to enter the code that comes in the scan and cut link card. It's on the back of the little card. You scratch it off and release the code. Once I have entered that code, you will see that the scan and cut link becomes unlocked. When it's locked, it's gray. When it's unlocked, it's white and it has the code here underneath it. So once you've done that, you will get a pop-up window, which will go ahead and take you over to download the Scan and Cut Link plugin. However, since I've already done it, I'm gonna show you that there's also a manual way to go ahead and get there. So I'm gonna go to scanandcut.com, up to support, click on the little arrow next to it, and to driver downloads. So I'm going to enter the model of my Scan and Cut. You will enter the model of whatever Scan and Cut you have. And you'll see I get a link to downloads for my model. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that. It detects the system that I'm using. If it's wrong, I can correct it, but this is in fact the system I'm using. I'm going to say OK. And now I can see all of the software that is available to me. So what I'm really interested in is right here under premium software, it says scanning cut link. And I want to go ahead and click on that. This will now take me to a screen where I can read the end user license agreement and everything else. And I can download the software. And you'll see there are a couple notes here that they want to make sure that Adobe Illustrator is closed and that you are logged into your computer as an administrator. Soon it is down, as soon as it has downloaded, I'm going to go ahead and open the package. And I'm going to let myself be guided through the steps to install this software. This is a really important box that comes up here, okay? You absolutely must drag the plugin file over into the Illustrator plugin folder. Now I'm going to show you exactly how to do that, but if you forget, you can go ahead and click on Instruction Manual, and it will take you right to the Instruction Manual for using Scan and Cut Link. You can see everything we've already gone through about how to enter the code and everything else. And here on page three, it has instructions at the top for Windows and at the bottom for Mac, so you can see exactly how to do it. But come along with me and I'm gonna show you how. So I have two different windows open. Both of them are in my Applications folder. So in my Applications folder, I'm going to Scan and Cut Link, the folder, and then it's there's a folder that says Plugin. And you can see it says for Adobe Illustrator 2020, and this one says for 2017 through 2019. I actually have Adobe Illustrator 2021, so I'm going to use this one up top. In the second window, I'm still in the Applications folder, but this time I'm looking for Adobe Illustrator 2021, whatever the current edition of Adobe Illustrator is that I'm using. Then I'm looking for the Plugins folder, which is right here. And now I'm gonna take this Scan and Cut Link plugin and drag it right into that folder. It's gonna require me to authenticate with a password which is just my system password. I can do it, it's right there. And now that it's been installed, it means I'm ready to go ahead and open Illustrator. So you can open a new document. I'm gonna work with a stencil design that I've been playing around with. So here's my design. But there's actually a problem with it, which I'm gonna show you right now. So if I go up to File, you will see this very exciting brand new option called Brother Scan and Cut Link and a couple different options after it. Now, Export FCM, that first option. 
What that means is that you're going to take whatever your Illustrator file is and you're going to turn it into an FCM, fancy cutting machine, fabric cutting machine. It's a proprietary file type that your Scan and Cut reads. And you're going to turn it into an FCM file and save it either to your hard drive or to a USB thumb drive, something like that. But you don't have to go through Canvas Workspace anymore. You can go directly straight from Illustrator to an FCM. The next option, transfer the FCM file via the internet. If you have a wirelessly activated Scan and Cut, this will allow you to transfer this image directly to your Scan and Cut right from Illustrator. No need to turn it into an SVG, an FCM, anything like that. It's totally magical. But here's where the problem is. So I'm going to go ahead and click on that transfer option. <gasps> Oh no, the artboard size is too big. So normally what happens is I tend to work 12 by 12, but your scan cut mat is actually slightly smaller than 12 by 12. So you need to make your artboard slightly smaller. So I'm gonna go over to the artboard tool and I'm going to make sure that my width and height are constrained so that I can go 11.5 inches. So now my artboard's nice and small. One of the problems though, is now my artwork is hanging off the edges. So you can just select it all and resize it, or I'm gonna just rotate it, because I think it will fit if I rotate it like 45. There you go, if I rotate it 45 degrees, it fits. So now that I have a smaller artboard and my artwork is all fitting on there, I'm going to go ahead back to Brother Scan and Cut Link, transfer the FCM file via the internet. This time it works. I can see a preview of what my cut file is going to look like. I can say OK. And now let's head on over to the Scan and Cut and cut out that design. I'm here at my Scan and Cut and I'm going to choose Retrieve Data, Wireless. Ta-da! There's the file we sent straight from Illustrator, so I'm ready to go ahead and cut it out. So here is my beautiful stencil, and you can see I was able to send it straight from Illustrator without actually having to go through Canvas Workspace, which is awesome. But there's one more thing to show you. So here in Illustrator, I'm going to open up this sheet of flags. These are little banners. And you could print these on sticker paper or onto cardstock, whatever it is. But if you put them in your scanning cut, you would have to individually scan around them, right, in order to cut them out. And that can be a little time consuming, especially if you're gonna, this is something you're gonna put in your shop or something like that. So you can now add registration marks up under file, scan and cut link. I can choose add registration mark. Ta-da! Registration marks appear at the corners of my design. So now all I need to do is print this and I'll show you. However, just like before, there is a slight problem with this. If you look at the print preview, you can see that the registration marks are not printing, right? They're slightly outside the printable range. So what you need to do, once again, is you need to change the artboard size and make it slightly smaller. So this is set up to be a piece of paper, and I want to make it a little bit littler than that. So I'm going to say done. So then I'm going to hit undo, which is command Z, and get rid of those registration marks. Now I'm going to change the artboard size so that it is 8 inches wide. And you can see how much smaller it is. But now when I go ahead and I add those registration marks, they come right in. Now they may come in on top of your artwork. See how the white part is cutting that off? So you may need to make your artwork slightly smaller to make it fit within the registration mark area without actually overlapping. There you go, looks perfect. So now when I go ahead and hit print, you'll notice that my registration marks are completely within the printable area, which is exactly what I want. So I'm gonna go ahead now and say print. 
So while that's printing, I need to take this image, which is a JPEG, just paste it here into Illustrator and turn it into something that is cuttable. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the image tracing function and I'm going to choose silhouettes. You can see that everything turns black and then I'm going to choose expand and it's going to create a vector file, but I don't want any of the words that are inside the banners. I only want the outlines of the banners to cut. So I'm going to go ahead and use the pathfinder tool. So first I want to choose divide. Then I want to choose exclude. And now you can see I only have the outline, which is exactly what I want. And this would be great if I was going to cut directly on the line, but I'm not, I want to cut a small border around it. So I'm going to go up to stroke. I'm going to add a stroke. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger than one point, maybe four points. Then I'm going to click on the word stroke to open the stroke panel. I could change the size even more if I wanted, make it even bigger than that. But more importantly, I want to round the corners of everything. You don't have to, but that's the preferred look that I like. I'm also going to go ahead and send the stroke to the outside of the line, which is going to make it just a little bit fatter and chunkier. If you don't like that look, you can do it on the inside. See how that gives nice sharp points on the banner, or you can leave it alone. You know, let's just leave it alone so you can see the middle, but you can see how different each of these choices makes the shape of the line. And there's not a right or a wrong. It's totally your preference. Once I've made a choice of how I want those tools to look, I'm going to go up to object and choose expand. Okay. Now I still have a lot of lines, so I need to go to the pathfinder and choose unite. And now I have this very simple outline, which is exactly what I want. So I'm going to say file, scan and cut link, transfer the file. And now you can see here they are all of my banners ready to go ahead and get cut out. So I'm going to say, okay. So let's head over to the machine. So you can see I have my printed design with the little bullseye and the line and the line is going into the machine. I'm going to choose retrieve data and wireless. That is my design. So I'm going to say, okay, it's giving me the instructions that I just gave you about which direction everything's supposed to go in. This allows you to preview the alignment to see if you like it. So you can use this, but you don't have to. So now on my screen, I can see that everything is perfectly aligned. I obviously didn't have to do any work because the registration marks are doing all the work. So I can just select cut and press start. So now that this is finished cutting, ta-da, you can see my beautiful little labels. I've got a whole sheet. You could of course have done this on sticker paper if you wanted, really, really easy. So my favorite type of file to cut using Scan and Cut Link is something like these soft watercolor images because they'd be really hard to get out with the scanner, but it's so easy when you can send your file straight from Illustrator on over to your Scan and Cut. As you can see, there are lots of different ways to make Illustrator link to your Scan and Cut using Scan and Cut Link. Thanks so much for watching. For more tips, tricks, and tutorials, check out my online Scan and Cut classes. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Visit my blog at balzerdesigns.typepad.com. And of course, visit the Scan and Cut website at scanandcut.com.